Earlier this week, House sent House Bill 693 over to the Senate, the bill that wants to ban absentee ballot drop boxes around the state of Idaho. The bill barely passed, though, 37 to 33. But there were a lot of things said during debate and advancement of this bill that left a lot of people wondering about its intent. It was explained this way by the bill sponsor, Representative Priscilla Giddings, during its State Affairs Committee hearing on March 2nd. This legislation um, identifies that I think that there's a higher um, benefit to not having these because of potentials with um, with fraud or um, some um, unforeseen circumstance that could contaminate ballots in a location where there's not somebody there to make sure that that doesn't happen. Election integrity has been a big talking point during the last couple of years, even with politicians here in Idaho, despite no evidence being brought forward of any sort of election fraud during the last presidential election cycle. And that included unsupported claims about drop boxes, drop boxes which were used by every county in Idaho during the 2020 primary and a vast majority of them for the general election that November. In fact, there are 43 drop boxes being used in 32 of Idaho's 44 counties right now, including three of them, one in each of the counties in Representative Giddings District. A lot of them use federal COVID cash to buy newer, more secure drop boxes, by the way. All of them are located either just outside a county courthouse or city hall or even inside. And all but four, as you see here marked by the green check mark there, all but four of them have a 24-hour video security camera pointed right at them. Contrary to what Giddings claimed about the possibility of contaminated ballots where there's not somebody there to make sure that doesn't happen. How do we know this? Well, this information isn't kept with the Secretary of State's office, we asked. But this information was compiled by the Bingham County Clerk, who has monthly conference calls with all 44 county clerks who are in charge of elections. She also told us they're part of an email group. County clerks end up talking several times a week, so they do communicate. So when Bingham County Clerk Pam Eckhart heard what was said during the State Affairs Committee hearing on March 2nd, that got her thinking, and then it got her on her phone. Representative Giddings, do you know how many clerks actually have drop boxes in the state? The very first question asked the representative, representative Giddings was how many counties use a drop box and she was unsure. I actually do not have a complete list. Every county does it differently. Um, I think there's about eight to ten counties. And I knew that was incorrect. It is interesting that, that Representative Giddings said she doesn't know, maybe eight or ten. There are three drop boxes alone in her district. Uh, and I, I don't know that she talked to a county clerk in her district, but uh, when we talked as county clerks, no one had been contacted to ask that question. An aide could have easily gotten that information from all 44 counties in, in two hours. And uh, as she continued on and said, well, we just want to to protect for you know future fraud or uh, contamination. I just thought no one has asked the county clerks who we are on the front lines. We are all for safe and secure elections. That's our job. We would be the first ones to say, "Ooh, we don't think drop boxes are a good idea," but we're seeing the positive side of drop boxes. Mostly, Eckhart says, drop boxes are about convenience, a better way people can make sure their vote actually gets counted. The mail service now in eastern Idaho, it takes a little bit longer. Why is that? You can drop it off in our Blackfoot post office or on the, any of the mail routes, but it all goes to Salt Lake now to be sorted and then has to come back. And it can take up to two weeks sometimes for letters. It just depends. I think one of the other concerns was just somebody just coming up and taking the drop box or the envelopes inside, breaking into it. Well, they could, but they could do that at a U.S. Postal box also. It's just another way to help people facilitate the ability to uh, vote in a safe and secure way. Nobody from Representative Gidding's office called county clerks to ask how many are using drop boxes or why. We reached out to ask her about this, but she has yet to return our email or phone call. If she had, she might have learned from those county clerks. They were against this bill from the beginning, deeming it unnecessary. As for the contention of unforeseen circumstances of contaminated ballots, that just hasn't happened, Eckhart told us. 
We've learned the same from Ada County, where there are six of these drop boxes. Eckhart told us even if someone wanted to drop off 20 or even 100 fraudulent absentee ballots, they'd be tossed out during the verification process because you place your absentee ballot into a secrecy sleeve so that no one can see you voted for. Then you put both into a postage paid ballot return envelope. It's all easily explained very simply on the state's voter website. In Idaho, your return envelope will have your name and a signature line on the outside. This, along with the barcode, helps those checking in your ballot to quickly pull up your voter record and efficiently verify your signature while changing your outstanding ballot status. This step ensures that only one ballot is issued to or returned by any one voter. There's a lot of videos of that website if you want to check them out. Once your ballot is accepted and separated from that outer envelope, the ballot itself becomes anonymous to guarantee the privacy of your vote. All of this is closely monitored through each stage. Your ballot is then stored according to approved security plans, and that place is never accessed by fewer than two people. The separated outer envelopes, those are kept in case there's a need for an audit and to update voter history. Finally, during debate on this bill on the House floor, Representative Giddings quoted Idaho code to say absentee ballots had to be mailed or delivered to the election officer who sent it to you. But because some in Bingham County mailed theirs in 2020 and it had to go through Salt Lake City before being delivered to the election officer, we were told by Eckhart, Eckhart today there were 10 ballots that missed the deadline and were not counted.